Hello and a very good morning to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, this moment I would like to share with you about the Espresso Statistical Package. For those who are really new to this channel, please consider to subscribe, like and share all this information to your friend and family. So, um, what is SPSS and what we are going to learn today? Actually, uh, we need to understand the SPSS windows, okay? So, generally speaking, this is the SPSS I already opened. So, this is what we call as a data in SPSS. So, we got the .sav. SAV is the data. So, another window um, also available in the SPSS will be explained after this. And then, we need to familiar the step in the SPSS or data analysis. SPSS is one of the uh, most prominent use uh, software recently due to the fact that it is using the um, com, um, um, GUI interfaces uh, rather than the coding uh, method in terms of uh, requesting any analysis available uh, for the statistical analysis to be conducted. And then we also need to define variable and enter data into the data editor and then perform data editing and transformation, run selected statistical procedure and also statistical page. Okay, let us begin with the SPSS data editor. So if you open the SPSS, this is the SPSS with the data. If you are open the new set of SPSS, it will become something like this. After a few seconds, then the SPSS will show you this box. Okay, if you can see here, it is indicate the output. Output means whatever analysis that you conducted, the output will be generated automatically for you. And then um, the data or the data editor will be available for you to be inserted. Okay, this is the data. This is where you want to set up your variables and also enter your data accordingly. If you want to collect the data efficiently, you may want to use the another um, criteria or methodology in terms of collecting the data. Uh, usually, we are going to use the Google Drive as the method of data collection for online. And then uh, we need to do some sort of minor manipulations and then we proceed with the data analysis. So the first one is we need to understand the interfaces. So if you open any SPSS, you can find this uh, interface as indicated here. So the first one, we call it as a data view. And then the second one, we call it as a variable view. So the data view and variable view is a very crucial element. Uh, to enable you understand how you want to enter and set up your data. Okay, so data view is where you enter your data, whereby the variable view is where you set up your variable. Theoretically speaking, we got two kind of variable. The first one, um, we name it as independent variables or factor, and then we got the dependent variables or we call it as outcome. I'm going to share with you and demonstrate the simpler example for this particular explanation. So let's say I got the first variable name as gender, and then the next one I got the example of the status. Status here indicate the health status. Okay, so um, under this column in the SPSS, we can um, identify and understand the idea of the name, type, width, decimal, label, value, missing, column, alignment, measures, and whole. What is this for? Actually, this is uh, for identification purposes. So the name uh, is actually where you want to put the name of your variables. Usually, I'm not going to use the gender here. Instead, I'm going to put the x1. So the x indicated as the factor, or we call it as the independent variables. And where I want to put the labels, I'm going to put the label over here so that uh, the SPSS can easily be um, identified and classified accordingly. So the next step or the next column is called type. So the type actually can be changed due to the fact of these three dots. You can just go to this um, element and then you can see these three dots. You can click these three dots and change accordingly what kind of variable that you have. So as default, SPSS will assume all the data will be entered as numeric because the gender will be coded as a numerical values with the uh, assigned value. Example, gender, we got two kinds of gender, male and female. Therefore, we need to assign the value here. Okay, width is the, um, the width of the variable, decimal point, 
uh, for the decimal number. Labels is for labeling. Uh, values is where you want to indicate something. In this example, I got uh, number one for male, for example, number two for female. So I'm going to hit OK button. The SPSS is already understand. So when I want to enter the data in the data view, I must uh, put the number one as male, number two as female. For the hair status, is also being categorized as two category. For example, I'm going to put as one as uh, non-healthy or we call it as sick. And then number two is healthy. This is example only because we want to teach the computer number one is um, sick, number two is healthy or vice versa up to you because it is just a uh, it is just the indication for us to teach the computer. So the next one is called missing value. So sometimes when you collect the data, um, some of the, um, we call it as a sensitive question might not be available due to the unresponses uh, from our respondent. Therefore, you must set up the missing values, which is I'm going to discuss later on. So the next one is the measures. The measure is very important to make sure that you understand the different scale of measure. So the different skill of measure you can refer to the previous video that already been described under the um, understanding of the uh, statistical concept. So for the gender and health status, in this case, we are going to specify them under nominal measures. So after you set up these two simple variables, you can further to explore the data view and enter the data accordingly. Okay, the row here actually indicated the respondents details so this is the first respondent second respondent third respondent fourth respondent and so on and so forth that's why um, in my um, practices I'm I'm going to put another variables up here I'm going to specify it as ID so the ID will indicate the numbers number one this is respondent number one this is respondent number two this is respondent number three number four and number five this is just for example okay then when you got the, this kind of um, idea, you can straight away enter your data. Let's say in your question A, your first respondent is male, male, female, female, and female, let's say. So your male is six, healthy, sick, sick, and healthy. So you got these two variables. And then how you want to change back into numerical value because you want to enter the data from the uh, other parties or other software, let's say um, in your uh, Excel, so you can just go to here, which is, we call it as the value label, you can change accordingly. So if you can click here and it change automatically, it's indicate that you are successfully teach the computer uh, number one is what, number two is what. So that is the example of the data editor. I hope that you can uh, grasp the idea about setting up your data. So the next one, actually, we call it as the um, data output. So the output, or we call it as the viewer, is where you want to conduct the analysis and see the result. Example, if I want to generate the result, I can go to my SPSS over here and click for Analyze, Descriptive Statistic, and Frequency. I can straight away enter the variables that I needed. Then I can hit the OK button. The SPSS are going to generate an output for me. So the output is very crucial, especially if you want to report this um, data or these values in your thesis or in your reports. Then we got another one. We call it as the syntax editor. So the syntax is where you want to play with the command. So I'm going to make some sort of... Um, demonstration you go to analyze descriptive and frequency so instead of you are um, enter the ok button you are going to enter the paste button and automatically the SPSS are going to generate this syntax for you so the syntax is usually uh, very crucial and also very important uh, in saving time you see when you got this syntax, you can reanalyze and reanalyze again if you got another data that already been updated by the time to time. Okay, I'm going. I'm going to share with you. This is the example right just now. The command that I ask the computer to run is actually frequency for y. What is y? Our dv dependent variables health status. So we can highlight that particular command and run accordingly. 
Okay, and then you can also save your time by indicating all of the variables simultaneously. Example, I'm just going to put x1 and y and instead of go to the analyze, descriptive and run for frequency, I can just highlight all this code and then click the control R or press this button run selection and automatically the Xbox says are going to generate the output um, in a very split second. So you can see it's been generated um, straight away. This is the functions of the syntax. Okay. Alright, so now let's have move on on the step on the data analysis. So if you are new into the statistical approach, bear in mind that SPSS can offer you a lot of easier way to understand the um, statistical um, analysis. So the first one, you need to define your variables. That's, that's why when you construct a study, when you want to solve a problem, in this uh, tutorial actually, I'm going to give you and share with you this kind of data and then we can analyze together the data to understand a problem that we will address later on and then we have the second step which is we call it enter data so i'm not going to add enter the data one by one instead i'm going to share with you how you can um, conduct an online uh, online data collection and then you can run very consider what i did before do some sort of editing and then conduct reliability test transformation exploratory data analysis and conduct some sort of an normality testing and data analysis for um, univariate, bivariate and multivariate analysis. So all this step is actually very simple to be conducted in SPSS. In fact, I also will explain to you and give you some other recommendations if you are stuck with your analysis soon. So you need to define and enter your variable. So this is what I mentioned before. You can see these two tab. These two tab is very important in any data analysis approach. Okay, remember, you are going to set up your variable here and then you are going to enter your data based on the respondent details by row in the data view tab. That's why you might be familiarized with this uh, tab, data view tab and variable view tab. Okay, and then you can also understand uh, the use of the name, labels, and values. Okay, usually, let's say I want to insert another factor. So let's say I got another one, we call it x2. So x2 is to h. And my h is actually being collected using numerical data. Example, so I'm going to set this one as scale instead of nominal. And did I need to do, uh, did I need to put something in the values? No need, because you are going to specify it using the numerical condition. Therefore, you must insert the data view in the numeric form. Example, the first respondent is 23, the second one 24, the third one is 34, and then the next one is 53, and then the next one is 23. This is example only of the data collection process. That's why the definitions of variable, the identifications of the type of the skill measurements of the variable is very crucial. In the beginning step of your approach okay the next step is actually you need to understand about the column and row so all these notes will be shared with you so don't worry you can just download in the link description below and then we can conduct the editing and also transformation why this thing is important let's say you have a likert scale i am going to share with you one idea so i got a series of likert scale here so all this likert scale can be analyzed um, strategically using this method where we need to do some sort of editing and we need to do some sort of transformation before we can begin the analysis and then you can uh, sort of do some sort of clearing deleting adding variables changing order and so on and so forth so the new SPSS offer you a very versatile where you can just highlight it and then move your variables straight away okay in fact you also can move your variables according to the list or according to the ascending or descending order. That's why I love to use the ID number as the identification so that I can easily sort them if my data got jumbled around, you see? All right, so the next one is actually data transformation. This is two things that is very important, especially if you are analyzing Likert skill data. We call it as transform menu and also an, uh, transform menu, which is compute. Uh, functions and also record function. These two functions is very critical and crucial, especially if you do some sort of manipulation and coding kind of approaches. Example, if you want to say that 
uh, the higher score indicate the higher risk the lower score indicate the lower risk so you want to compute uh, what is the score of this risk for this uh, respondent um, instead of the another respondent so all these things can be done automatically that's why after this session i'm going to explain to you how to um, construct a digital online questionnaire so that you can further uh, collect the data easily and then manipulate the data and then insert back all the data in the SPSS in just a few minutes so that you can finish your study in a very short time of period. Okay, and then the statistical procedure is indicated and available in the analysis tab here. So you can see this is the data where you want to make some sort of data manipulation. This is a transformation where you want to change code and do a lot of um, transforming the data status. And then we got the analysis and then we got the graph. So actually this one, this one is very crucial. Transform and analyze is the two menu that is very important in SPSS. So the next one is a reliability test. I'm going to explain it later on. And then we conduct the exploratory data analysis or we call it as the EDA. EDA sometimes is very critical because we want to make sure that our assumptions are met. So when your assumptions are met, then you can use the appropriate statistical tools, which is I also will explain it later on. So this is a frequency measurement. And then this is the analysis of variance. This is the correlation analysis. And then we got one important thing that people usually neglected or ignored. We call it as SPSS coaches. SPSS coaches actually offer you a series of help so that you can request it automatically and it's already being installed in your help menu. You can go to the helps and then you can um, go to the IBM uh, predictive analytics community and you can uh, go to the coaches here and then you can find help. Okay, you can go to the topics and then uh, it will give you some sort of idea. Uh, what kind of support that you need, what kind of analysis that you need, all that things um, are already available online. But if you want to learn more about this, you can just refer to my channel because I'm going to explain to you until you know what you do. Okay, this is a statistical approach. It is a guided for you so that you can uh, get a glimpse idea what kind of analysis, what kind of statistical conduct that you needed. Uh, to finish your job and um, that is the last uh, slides for this particular um, explanation i really hope that um, ladies and gentlemen can appreciate this knowledge so that you can share with your friend and family about the use of sps um, before i forgot sometimes maybe you also got some uh, problems because the sps is a licensed product therefore you need some some sort of backup or some sort of idea how to use alternative freeware available in the market so you can go to the website and type for this keyword we call it as the pspp so pspp actually uh, uh another method you see this one pspp gnu project free software foundation actually being constructed based on the spss foundation or spss view so um, if you do not have SPSS as your tools, you can actually use these tools as a backup tool, um, especially if you got your computer or machines not installed with this uh, software. So I'm going to uh, give you the idea PSPP. So you can open this PSPP uh, applications. It can be installed in the Macintosh or in your um, in your Windows application. So. Actually, the view is sort of similar with the SPSS, uh, but the difference is just the the um the analysis will be more compact and more not robust like the SPSS. But the the important element is there that you can uh, straight away use. That I'm going to share with you also how to use this PS uh, PP as the um alternative methods if you did not have uh, any SPSS or license package. Okay, so that is the idea uh, so far for the SPSS understanding uh, at the glimpse. Hopefully, this video is useful for you. And please do check out for our next uh, tutorial. So the next tutorial, we are going to learn about, um, let me see, 
Okay, so the next one we are going to learn about uh, frequency and also data analysis. So, but before that, I'm going to give you an idea how to construct your online form. Please check out another video. Thank you for watching. See you again. Bye bye.